What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo and I'm actually out of town when this is being posted. I'm in New York. If you happen to be in New York and meet me at the Nintendo World Center on um, this upcoming Saturday, feel free to do so. But while I am out of town, I figured that was a great time to get caught up on my uploads. Work has been crazy for me lately. Couple that with packing for my trip and taking the time to breed everything that I wanted to breed. Haven't made time for what I needed to. But I do have week four of the Pokemon Premier League here for you today. And this battle is up against the West Chang United who are coached by the Unlawful Exile. I will leave his information in the description. And this was a battle that I was actually pretty worried about going into because he had access to Mega Venusaur. Um, the combination of a few of the Pokemon that he had access to, including Mega Venusaur or uh, even Alakazam with uh, Focus Ash would be pretty annoying. Um, and then of course he also had Mamoswine and Mew, and Mew is really, really unpredictable. So uh, I was a little bit worried about those, but fortunately for me, he actually didn't end up bringing Mew. I was quite happy to see that. I have a Choice Banded Pangoro, Mixed Obama Snow, uh, a pretty all around bulky kind of mixed bulk Clefable, more physically bulky though, in order to take on Psy Shock or if I do get hit by an Earthquake or an Icicle Crash, I can take those hits a little bit better. Um, we also have a defensive Rotom in order to have some synergy with uh, Clefable to Volt Switch away and spread burns. We have a nice Life Orbed Caesar because he has nothing that really wants to take on Caesar. And then I also have a Choice Scarf Chandelure. He had access to a Galvantula and I wanted Chandelure to be a present threat for his team if he laid up Sticky Web. And if he didn't bring Sticky Web, then I would be able to outspeed things like Alakazam or Star Raptor unless, of course, those Pokemon were Scarfed. Now, Going into this, I figured that he would actually lead off with either Venusaur or with um, Mammal Swine to set up rocks. Uh, Venusaur, of course, for the free Mega Evolution. And so I did lead off with Pangoro because I have Zen Headbutt. And then for Mammal Swine, I can just Drain Punch it to see what the item is. I'm bulky enough uh, so that the Mammal Swine can't KO me with the superpower if it happens to be carrying that. Um, unless it's a banded superpower, but I outspeed the Mammal Swine, which I thought was pretty weird. I have a lot of speed, but I didn't expect to outspeed it. And he just goes for Stealth Rock, which sucks because I can't really get rid of it. But his Mammal Swine is going to be very, very easy to handle now. Uh, he goes into Venusaur, and since Venusaur is not Mega Evolved, this critical hit, Banded Drain Punch, does a ton of damage. And actually, for this battle, uh, I couldn't link up with Liam. And so he actually had um, someone stand in to battle for him. And uh, so he actually didn't have the spread that he wanted to have for this match, I don't think, because he wanted to go with something for synthesis. Now I switch in Chandelure here, predicting him to predict me to go into either um, my Obama Snow or Caesar to take the Giga Drain or Sludge Bomb. And he just puts me to sleep, which is okay. I figured I could burn a turn to sleep there, which I am able to do because he doesn't over predict and just tries to go for Sludge Bomb to hit a switch in. Unfortunately, his Vaporeon is really bulky, and so this Choice Scarf Energy Ball just doesn't do enough damage to 2-hit KO it. I was really hoping it would, but I really need Modest in order to secure a 2-hit KO with a Choice Scarf. Figuring that he would just either protect or go for Scald, now's a great time to bring in Rotom. I can scare him out, and if he tries to switch into Mamoswine, I can just burn it. Because spreading burns around the Pokemon that he has is fantastic for just general residual damage, and it will allow Caesar a much easier time sweeping in the late game. Now as he brings in Mamoswine, fortunately I hit Will-O-Wisp, otherwise he would have been able to outspeed me and possibly hit me with the freeze dry if he had that move, uh, maybe even a knockoff or something like that. No reason to take that unnecessary damage, but I also didn't want to risk going for the 50-50 between Volt Switch and uh, Hydro Pump either. Now as he brings back in Venusaur, I have to burn this thing. I'm still operating under the assumption that it has Synthesis, so I thought he was just going to use Synthesis right there, but when I didn't see him use it, and he also didn't go for a Grass-type move, it made me go, oh, I don't think he has Synthesis. And that means that that crit earlier was really important because Venusaur is his main way to check Caesar, and without Synthesis, he can't do anything about my Caesar because uh, he's just out of HP. I have a lot of speed investment on this Caesar. It is adamant, almost max speed. I think I only have 244 speed EVs on it. But I did want to give it a little bit of bulk in order to take hits. Uh, just those little small chipping away type hits where Venusaur is using Giga Drain, things like that. I wanted to give it a little bit more HP. 
but uh, predicting a fire fang from Mawile, I go back out in the road time here to hopefully wake up. If he does go out into Vaporeon or Alakazam, I, I wanted to wake up so badly here because I went for the Will-O-Wisp and I stay asleep. And of course, that's my first turn. I knew I could live any hit uh, that Mawile wanted to go for. Take that, actually that Life Orb uh, play rough pretty well and that's because he's not Sheer Force, he is Intimidated. If he had Sheer Force, this battle actually would have gone pretty differently. And here I actually expected him to go ahead and switch out and I went for Pain Split. And I'm still asleep. And I was like, please wake up, I need my HP back and I stay asleep for the maximum three turns. So that was a little bit unfortunate. But uh, here I just want to really prevent him from healing up anything too well. I actually expected him to go back out into his Mawile. But he goes out into Alakazam, which is Sashed. Fantastic play, because here, even though I break his Sash and I, I get some HP back, he also just heals completely back up with Wish, so he's back to Sash. Now, I was worried that Alakazam had Energy Ball, and I have plenty of switch-ins for Alakazam, barring some type of weird hidden power. Uh, so Clefable is able to come in here pretty easily and take the Energy Ball attack, which I did like. Um, on Clefable, I just had Moonblast as my offensive attack, which leaves it a little bit walled by Mawile. But at the same time, um, it's going to do a decent chunk to Mawile. Now, I was expecting either uh, the Vaporeon to come back in right there as we both switch out, and I get the raw end of that uh, double out as he goes out in the Star Raptor. He was just trying to grab some offensive momentum. And since I didn't see Intimidate on Star Raptor, I'm, I was assuming that it was Choice Scarfed. But it's actually Sharp Beak, and he's able to just cleanly knock out Rotom by switching up into Double Edge. Um, since he chose to go out into Alakazam instead of something with a little bit more base HP like Vaporeon, I didn't have enough HP regain in order to uh, live that Double Edge. Um, but that's okay. I can go into Obama Snow, and I calc it from this range. I have no problem KOing him with an Ice Shard. I have max attack and max special attack on this uh, Obama Snow build this week. And I just went for Earthquake because I actually expected him to go out into his Mawile. And this is perfect because if I had gone for Ice Shard, it would have failed to 2-hit KO Alakazam. But since he went out into uh, Alakazam like that, now Alakazam is in Bullet Punch and Ice Shard range. And I lose nothing by going for Ice Shard here. If he wants to go into Vaporeon, I get to get the residual damage of the Hail on him um, to negate his Leftovers recovery. And I can just go for Giga Drain. Now here he goes fishing for Scald Burns, and that is a very dangerous game, because if he gets the burn, then I can no longer KO Star Raptor with um, an, an Ice Shard. But if he doesn't get the burn, then I get to 2 hit KO his Vaporeon. And he does not get the burn in what may be the only instance of Skull just going, you know what, it's only a 30% chance of burn. It's, it's not going to burn this time, and that's I guess that's Pokemon. I really thought he was going to burn me, and I was. I have Giga Drain, Ice Shard, Earthquake, and Blizzard, so I was okay with being burned because I had other special attacks. But i um, just going to go on to Clefable here, uh, take the Fire Fang, and I get burned, which is okay. I prefer being burned to being asleep or paralyzed, I suppose. But I'm not going to be able to take an Iron Head after that. Mawile hits pretty hard all things considered, especially with a life orb. But I wanted to get as much residual damage on Mawile as I could. I had three remaining Pokemon at this point, and I could not one hit KO it without one more life orb hit for sure. So he makes a smart move and sacrifices Alakazam, and then he goes back out into Mawile in order to get the Intimidate on my Caesar. After the Intimidate, I'm no longer able to one hit KO Mawile from that range. So unfortunately, I'm forced to switch out and sacrifice my Chandelure. Now, uh, I did have Trick on Chandelure, just in case he went for um, uh, the uh, Fire Fang and then went for Sucker Punch. But I thought he would expect that, and so I just tried to attack him, which wasn't really a good play. Granted, I was kind of stuck in there at that point, but I did get the needed Life Orb hit that I needed to make sure I KO Mawile from that range. Uh, and the Hail damage earlier helped, too. I basically could have done right around 60% on average to it. And since he does not have Intimidate on Star Raptor, that's going to be it for Star Raptor 2. So that's pretty awesome. Um, that means we're going to come down on a victory here with a 2-0 up against the Newcastle United. So that means the Eternity City Enders finally pull a win out of the Pokemon Premier League against a pretty skilled opponent, even though um, uh, Liam had a little bit of a stand-in for the battle. He had a great team and he had a great person battling for him. So. I was very, very pleased to pull a victory out there. 
uh, my opponent definitely didn't necessarily bring the sets that he wanted to bring, but it was kind of a collaboration from my understanding. So uh, you kind of give a little, you get take a little in that situation. But I enjoyed the battle and we're gonna roll into the next week, which will be week five. And I'm basically just gonna go ahead and post these all back to back, not all in one day, but I wanna get caught up so that I can actually post weekly with everyone else. But for week five, we're going against, um, let's see, I think that's the actually the Baltimore Braviaries. And they are coached by someone who's been helping me out a lot with my um, recordings. And that, of course, is under the radar. And he has been recording in high quality for me. So thank you very much for that. And we'll look forward to that battle next time. So tune in for that. And in the meantime, have a great day, guys. Bye.